In our previous video, we dealt in detail with the anatomy of a permanent maxillary central incisor. A permanent maxillary lateral incisor bears a close resemblance to that of the central incisor. In this video, we will be dealing with the anatomy of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi. We at Dentorize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. The permanent maxillary lateral incisors are two in number. According to the FDI tooth notation system, the right permanent maxillary lateral incisor is numbered as 1, 2 and the left permanent maxillary lateral incisor is numbered as 2, 2. Following the similar approach, we will be discussing the permanent maxillary lateral incisor under five headings that is the labial aspect, the lingual aspect, the mesial aspect, the distal aspect and the incisal aspect. In order to describe the anatomy of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor, our approach would be to establish a direct comparison between the anatomy of a lateral incisor to that of the central incisor. Therefore, starting with the labial aspect first, considering the first heading that is the dimensions, the cervical incisor length of a lateral incisor is 9 mm, which is shorter in comparison to the cervical incisor length of a central incisor, which is roughly equal to 10 to 11 mm. Coming to the root length, the root length of a lateral incisor is 13 mm, which is equivalent to that of the root length of a central incisor. But Looking at the ratio of the crown length and the root length, we would observe that the root is greater in proportion to the crown length in a permanent maxillary lateral incisor. Coming to the second dimension that can be measured from the labial aspect that is the mesodistal dimension. The mesodistal dimension at the contact areas for a permanent maxillary lateral incisor is 6.5 mm while the dimension at the cervix is 5 mm. This implies that the mesodistal dimensions for a permanent maxillary lateral incisors are less in comparison to that of the central incisors. Coming to the next heading under the labial aspect that is the surface of the crown, the crown surface of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor is convex. This convexity is more than the convexity of surface present on the permanent maxillary central incisor. Coming to the next heading under the labial aspect that is the mesial outline of the tooth. The mesial outline for a permanent maxillary lateral incisor is convex but this convexity is more as compared to the convexity which is seen in the mesial outline of a permanent maxillary central incisor. The crest of curvature or the contact point for a lateral incisor is observed at the junction of the incisal and the middle third and this was the contact point on the distal outline of the permanent maxillary central incisor. Hope you can correlate the things well. The distal contact point of the central incisor is the mesial contact point for the lateral incisors for the obvious reasons. Then comes the mesioincisal angle. The mesioincisal angle for a lateral incisor is rounded. However, the mesioincisal angle for the central incisor was sharp. Coming to the distal outline of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor, the distal outline is more convex or more rounded. This convexity or roundedness is more than that of the mesial outline of the lateral incisor and the distal outline of the central incisor. Coming to the crest of curvature or the contact point, this contact point or the crest of curvature on the distal outline of a lateral incisor is present in the center of the middle third while this was present at the junction of the incisal and middle third for a central incisor. If you can observe, as we are moving away from the midline, the contact point are shifting more towards the cervical line. Coming to the distal incisal angle, the distal incisal angle for a lateral incisor is more rounded as compared to the distal incisal angle of the central incisor which was also rounded. Coming to the next heading that is the incisal ridge. The incisal ridge of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor is rounded which is in comparison to the central incisor which was more or less straight but was curved in the center. 
coming to the root of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor as seen from the labial aspect. Starting from the cervical line as we move towards the two-third of the length of the root, we observe that the root tapers. After this two-third length of the root, there is a sharp bend in the root towards the distal direction to end up in a pointed apex. However, in a central incisor, the root was more or less conical in shape. Starting with the next aspect of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor, that is the lingual aspect, similar to that of the central incisor, we observe that the tooth tapers towards the lingual side in the lateral incisor also. In the manner we studied the lingual aspect of a permanent maxillary central incisor, we would be observing the lingual aspect of the lateral incisor as well. Keep your explorer on the cervical line on the lingual aspect of a lateral incisor and move in an incisal direction. We would observe a convexity of the cingulum. However, this cingulum is more prominent in lateral incisor in comparison to that of the central incisor. Move more incisally and then we would enter into a concavity or a scoop-like depression called as the lingual fossa. This lingual fossa in the lateral incisor is more concave in comparison to that of the central incisor. Also, deep developmental grooves are present in this lingual fossa of lateral incisor which are less marked in the central incisor. Move more incisally and then there will be again a convexity of a lingual incisal ridge which is more well developed in the lateral incisor in comparison to the central incisor. The mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge in the lateral incisor are more marked in comparison to the central incisor. Coming to the next aspect of the permanent maxillary central incisor that is the mesial aspect starting with the first heading that is the labiolingual dimensions. The labiolingual dimension as measured from the mesial aspect at the crest of contour present in the cervical third of the crown is 7 mm while the labiolingual dimension at the cervix is 6 mm. These dimensions are less in comparison to the labiolingual dimensions of the central incisor indicating that the lateral incisor is narrower in dimension in comparison to the central incisor. Coming to the crown at the incisal third, as we have already discussed in the lingual aspect, the lingual incisal ridge is very well developed. Due to this development of the lingual incisal ridge, the crown appears to be thicker in the incisal region from the mesial aspect. Coming to the root, the labial outline of the root is relatively straight, the overall shape of the root is tapered cone and the apex of the root is bluntly rounded. In our video on permanent maxillary central incisors, we have already discussed that a line drawn through the apex of the root will bisect the incisal ridge of the crown. This holds true for the lateral incisor as well and this alignment is characteristic of maxillary central and lateral incisors. Starting with the next aspect of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor that is the distal aspect, we have to compare this aspect with the mesial aspect of the lateral incisor. There are two differences. Point number one, the curvature of cervical line on the distal aspect is less as compared to that on the mesial aspect. Point number two, in the incisal third of the crown, the width of the crown appears to be thicker on the distal aspect as compared to that of the mesial aspect. Starting with the last aspect of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor that is the incisal aspect. The incisal aspect of this tooth sometimes resembles that of a central incisor or it may resemble that of a small canine. If it resembles to that of the central incisor, the features would be more or less same with few differences. These differences are Number one, in size. Number two, the lingual incisal ridge would be more developed. Number three, the cingulum would be more prominent. Number four, the label and the lingual outlines are more convex as you can see in the figure. However, like the central incisors only, the labial lingual dimension in the lateral incisor is greater than the mesodistal dimension. So this was all about the anatomy of a permanent maxillary lateral incisor. In our next video, we have made a direct comparison between the permanent maxillary central and lateral incisor in tabular form so that things become more clear to you. If you like our content, please do hit the like icon, share so that we can reach out to maximum people, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload a new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned, stay safe. Thanks for watching.